Hey, welcome to the super easy Photoshop tutorial. If you're one of those people that keep saying you're going to learn Photoshop eventually, but keep putting it off because you realize there's a huge time investment before you're going to be able to create anything decent, um, hopefully these tips and tricks and this little walkthrough I'm going to do for you today will get you up and running. Let's be honest, the program is huge. I've been using it for years and I'm still discovering things about it. So you'll have the same experience, I'm sure, but that doesn't mean you can't start creating great content today. So I'm using Photoshop CS5. These concepts are pretty transferable to any version. We can actually create a new file by going up to File New, uh, setting the pixel size that we want for the image and clicking OK. But we're actually going to start with an existing image and build upon that. Um, the existing image will end up being our background. So let's do that. File open. I'm going to use this file here and click open. And now we're into the interface here. Let's talk about this. Uh, this area is called our canvas. We have our toolbar along the left side here. We have layers, channels, paths, so on. Um, some different options here. These are all configurable. Um, and you can enable or disable and bring up things that you don't have yet by clicking on here. Um, see, so this brings up the mask thing. I'm not going to use that right now, so I can just disable it. Oops. So yeah, if that happens, anything disappears, you can just kind of select it back on and it brings it back up. And I think one of the best ways of learning this interface is to actually go ahead and create something. So let's do that. In Photoshop, we're usually working within layers, so let's uh, create a new layer. You can do that by clicking this little icon down here. You can also do it up in the menu, but layer, new layer. Or, let me just delete this for a second. You can also do it, uh, for instance, if you're creating a new item like a drawing or, or text on top of another item, it should create another layer automatically. Type something there. This is a selection tool up here, which you'll need to use to move it around. Let's get into resizing right away. There's resizing the full image, which is every layer together. And that's the actual resizing of the image. If you found that you wanted to expand this, you thought, well, you know what, I'm just going to double this background. I want the actual image to be bigger. You can do that by expanding the canvas size, not the image size, but the canvas size. So let's just try to do that here for a second. Um, image canvas size. And you can drop down in here into percentages. If you're more comfortable working that way. Uh, width, let's say if we just want to double it. So we'll do 200%. And you notice it it expanded it on both sides. Let's just undo that. So uh, edit, undo canvas size. Um, there's a reason for that. It's it's this little anchor area down here. So we can actually tell it, oh, maybe our left side is OK. We want it to expand to the right. So we'll click over here, and it says which way it's going to expand. And percentage, 200, OK. And then Here's another thing. Um, your background usually comes up locked if you started with a, an, an image the way that we did. So what you can do is zoom out. Uh, you can do it by a key keyboard command, command uh, minus sign. You can also do it just with um, a view, obviously, zoom out. Uh, on PC, I can't remember what the actual shortcut key is, but uh, just look under your menu and you always see what the shortcut keys are. So uh, how I normally deal with the background being locked like that is I will select the, the image that I want. I will edit cut, and then I can just do edit paste again, and it will paste it up on the layer above it. This is good if you want transparencies behind whatever you're working with. I'm using the select tool and make sure that I'm on the layer that I want to manipulate. And then I'm going to drag that over. You just make sure you're on the right layer and then you, whatever you're doing with any of your tools is going to apply to that specific layer. 
And what I want to do is I want this duplicated and I want to put it right next to it. So you can right click on the layer over here, say duplicate layer. And then I'm still selected here. I am on the new layer. So then I can grab that and slide it along. Doesn't look great, but it demonstrates the idea. I want to move subscribe maybe to the center. So I'll select subscribe and drag it over. Okay, now I'm going to quickly undo that stuff because I just I want to use the small image. I just wanted to demonstrate how that works. Um, okay, so resizing just the individual layers. So in this case, I want to resize this text. Of course, I can just go back to the text and resize the, the size here and do it that way. But if it was a, an actual image, not just text, um, but you can also do it with text. Go up to Edit, Transform, Scale, and you've got these little grab points here. If you hold down Shift on your keyboard and then click and drag this, you can keep the uh, size um, in proportion. And then the important thing is this is still in an edit type mode. In order to complete the operation, you have to click back away from the tool. So I click back on the Select tool and then ask if I want to apply this transformation. Say so Apply. And now I'm back to the, an item that I can move around and so on. Font color. I'm on the font layer. I select the font tool and we see a color down here, but there's also the color up here. This color corresponds to the text. So I can manipulate the color that way. This is our foreground color that is used for our brush tool as well as our, we can use it to change the font color if we select the, the font and then click on this to open it up, switch to a different color, and then click OK. And it can be done like that. I'm still in the font mode here, and again, I have to always click away. So I go into Select Tool so that I can grab it or do whatever again. Let's create another text item here. Okay, so click away. Let's just make this second one a uh, different color. So make sure we're selected on like the text tool and we'll change this. Okay, and then we have to click away again select this and see so you notice this is above the subscribe and that's because it's above it in the layers palette so we can change that by just grabbing it and dragging it to a different position and there's a number of things you can do with any layer whether it's font or graphic of some sort by right clicking on the layer itself and saying blending options so for example, drop shadow, and you can play with these settings on your own to figure out, you know, kind of look that you're looking for. And even when you go to lighter colors and you find that they might not show up very well, the blend mode is multiply. You can switch this to normal and then it becomes a little more prominent. So just some options for you there. If uh, what you're trying to do is not quite working under the multiply blend mode. Switch that back. And stroke. These are a couple of the ones I use all the time. Uh, the stroke is the little line around the outside. And you can change color of that too if you want. I'll leave it at black. Let's do this as well. Right click and blending options. Stroke. Maybe change this one to a white. It just helps this text stand out. And you can go through any one of these that you check off. And then when you select on them, once they're selected, then it gives you the different options for that particular style. 
display mode is screen, so we're probably not going to see a, a little yellow color on there. So if we go to normal and then expand the size of it, and you'll see the effects that are associated to any layer right here. You can toggle them on and off like that, or remove all the effects. So this is kind of good when you want to export out different versions of the file. And the other thing you can do is image adjustments, which give you similar options as under the filters, but you have um, something similar to what you do with effects where you can toggle them on and off. Let me show you here. Um, let's do a curves adjustment to the background. Uh, any adjustment layer you do will apply to the items below it, unless you press the clip to layers button here and then it will just apply to the immediate layer below and you would affect it like this. Another thing you might use quite a bit is if you right click on uh, one of the layers and go to blending options is the opacity. Um, this is used quite a bit. You can also group things together by clicking this. drag each one of them into there. So now, um, if I select this, then when I'm moving it, I'm moving the two items together. Let's create another text item here. I'll just show you a cool trick as well. Uh, we've applied these effects already to, uh, let's use the like effects. If I right click on this and say copy layer style, that's copying my effects up into the clipboard. If I want to apply the exact same thing to comment, I'll just right click on there and paste layer style. Oh, and I wanted to mention as far as the text sizing, uh, you might get jammed up here when you notice that you have sought from size 6 point to uh, 72, depending on your version of Photoshop. That may be a little different, but you can actually override this just by selecting in there and typing what you want. So that's how I got the larger text. And one last thing, with our selection, we can move things around like this, but sometimes you're just trying to get an exact type movement. And you can do that by once you're in this mode and you've already got it selected and you're on the correct layer, you can use your little arrow keys on your keyboard to nudge it over a pixel at a time. Oh, and you'll want to save, uh, file, save as. And you'll want to save it as a Photoshop file so that you have all of your layers. So we will do that. And then the other thing is you probably want this to go somewhere like the internet or whatever. So let's go to file. Uh, there's two ways. If it is for the web, you can use the save for web devices. Um, in this case, it's, it says it's too big. Um, you have options, just the typical things that are going to run on the web and optimization for those sorts of things. Or you can also just save it by going to file, save as again, and say PNG or JPEG find PNG usually works the best. Like I said at the beginning of the tutorial, this is a large program. You're going to be learning things for probably years to come. I will do more videos. If there's anything specific you'd like to learn on Photoshop, please comment below and I'll do my best to get a tutorial out to you. I hope this was helpful. Remember to subscribe.